Evil Ernie is within reach of his goal. Megadeth, the nuclear annihilation of the entire planet. Abandoned by his only friend, Smiley the Psychotic Button, Ernie uses his Legion of the Dead to protect him from evil scientists, world governments, and opposing armies of zombies as he makes his way to the United States nuclear stockpile in Evil Ernie, War of the Dead. Welcome to Gunner Trash, episode 141, Evil Ernie, War of the Dead. My name is Eric. My name is Jason. How's it going? Excellent. Really? In a Mexican catalog? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. What's, what's, what's going on? Um, nothing. Uh, just got off work. Yeah? Ten hour day. Yeah, that sucks. I was a trooper. Yeah. But it was fun. I got to trade for some Transformers and... Ooh. Price of about a, uh, I probably put out about 300 comics today. That was fun. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Put out some old stuff. Like? Um, somebody traded in some old stuff yesterday. He had a, the 1973 Kitchen Sink Number 1 of the Spirit, which oh, was pretty cool. awesome. Yeah. Um, there was like a British Captain uh, Britain magazine. Had some David Lloyd and uh, okay, okay. Steve Dillon art in it. Is that uh, the first one? Um, even the first series or first yeah, issue? Yeah, first issue. No, I forget what number. It was like number five or something. Okay. I have the first issue. Ooh. Yeah. It, it was pretty cool. I flipped through it. And uh, did Alan Davis do the Captain Britain stuff? Uh, the one I have? I don't know. Because he did the cover. Like yeah. Like he signed the cover. But on the inside, there's three or four stories. But the uh, main, like, first story, the Captain Britain story... There's no credits anywhere. I even like looked in the front page and everywhere, but all the other stories have the credits. Like uh, Steve Dillon drew one of them, and it's so weird because it's it's like a, a little more. You know how like his characters have realistic facial expressions, but there's like a cartooniness to his style. Yeah. Well, there's like a feathery, very realistic look to everybody in in the story that he drew in there. Huh. It looks like I would not have recognized it as Steve Dillon art. But, uh, and then David Lloyd's art was really cool in it. Right. And then I think, I'm guessing Alan Davis drew the Captain Britain story, but I, but I don't know. He drew a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So, I would say Best Bet he's probably did. Yeah. I can't remember if he drew, I know he did do the cover on the, the copy, or the issue that I own. Right. Number one. Yeah. And there was some old Marvel horror in that pile, and, uh, um... Some like old Dell and Gold Key. I mean, there's there's some cool stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Old comics are cool. Yeah, they are cooler than the well, sometimes cooler than the new ones. Yeah, sometimes. Not always. In concept, they are. Mm-hmm. I think in concept they're cooler. They 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 were less the uh, idea of them. Yeah, there was less bullshit. Yeah, less bullshit. I don't, I don't want to say less thought going in, but less like. Uh, Second guessing and like right. uh, posturing and like pretension and like you know they're just like uh, comics. They weren't they weren't uh they weren't you know cleverly disguised in movie scripts. They were right right. They were just comics. Yeah yeah. They were for the military and the retired and yep. the kids. They're all the same. Ah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh. How about you? I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason we started this over was so that I wouldn't talk about this. Oh. <laughs> about your day in general? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, your day has That's many faucets. And... There's only been one yeah. thing that I've done today, <laughs> and I would can't talk about it. Well, uh. Maybe we should talk about evil learning. Okay, let's do about that. Let's, yeah. uh, let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Evil Ernie, War of the Dead. 
Chaos Comics, 1999. Written by Brian Polito, Len Kaminsky, and drawn by Dave Brewer. Yes, and we just looked up Dave Brewer. Yep. Because we were both kind of curious about who he was. Right. Uh, did some Marvel stuff in the mid-90s, some fill-ins, lots of 2099 stuff. Mm-hmm. Did some, some cable and whatnot. Did a couple issues of cable, a couple of Doctor Stranges, a, uh, a Deadpool or two. But we're, your, we're, your, we're uh, the most of our audience will probably be familiar with him. Is from his work on Static, Static X. X. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Not, uh, not to be confused with the... Ecstatics. Ecstatics. <laughs> yes. Oh, the, that would have been a way different the book. The fantastic Marvel comic yeah. written by Peter Milligan, drawn by Mike Allred. No, this is Static X, based on the <laughs> band that is most famous for having a lead singer with hair. <laughs> oh, he has, he has hair? Oh, he has crazy hair. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know. I saw the drawing, but I didn't even notice the crazy hair. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's straight up. Oh. Like, like, like Paul has, Abdul. Uh, don't tell me. But, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, are we having fun? <laughs> no. No, we are not. Uh. <laughs> uh, no, but, yeah, he's got, like, uh, you know, normal metal guy, long hair, but he, uh... Spikes all of it straight up. Really? Yeah. Maybe he sleeps like a bat. Like he he like somehow uh, anchors his you know ankles to like the ceiling or something. Uh, and gels it up and then just. We're okay. Uh, I used to work at a television station, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't work there anymore. So uh, you know, I can I can talk about all the shit that I pulled while I was there. <laughs> right. And not that I pulled any shit or anything like that, but I spent most of my time uh, not doing what I was supposed to be doing, Right. and hanging out with my friend up in uh, up in his office, and uh, we, we would patch through uh, MTV2 into his uh, television nice. up there, uh, back when <laughs> back when they showed music videos on that uh, on that channel. Oh, do they stop on that one too? Oh yeah. Really? Oh. I thought that was like the whole oh, yeah. reason they did a second one. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's too bad. I don't. Yeah, I don't know that they uh, they have any channel devoted to any kind of uh, music videos. Uh, that's a bummer. But uh, on a Saturday night, I believe uh, they would show. Uh, like they they would have whatever the 2003 version of Headbangers Ball was, Ooh. and there were more than a few episodes hosted by the lead singer of Static X and his hair and his hair. And uh, he got a uh, a viewer email once asking how he got his hair that way, and so he. <laughs> Described oh. how he did his hair. Oh, wow. Yeah. He said basically he would uh, just hairspray. Uh, that uh, he would, uh, basically he would take like a chunk of hair, hold it up, and then spray it. And just continue spraying it until it could stand on its own. And then he would do another chunk of hair. And do oh, that. my gosh. And go through a, basically a can of hairspray a day. What a douchebag. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! Wow! <laughs> like the the glam metal guys from the eighties, like they didn't even use that much. They just used you know a regular amount that any other girl would. Right. And, uh, <laughs> that's too bad. Oh yeah! It's too bad for uh, Dave Brewer that he had to draw that bullshit. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah. He had to. He had to probably use a. You know. Probably had to have references. Oh yeah, I had to yeah. look at. Pictures of that guy. Yeah, probably someone had to probably talk to the band. Probably no. had to get the art approved by the band. Right. Every page, like make my muscles bigger. Right. Yeah. Make me sexier. Maybe that's why he no longer works in comics. <laughs> <laughs> he got sick of it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what he does now. I don't know. Well, certainly, drawing comics was not his strong suit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're talking about evil or any war of the dead now. <laughs> yes, we are. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Not good. No. None of this was good. <laughs> can I can I give a piece of full disclosure? Oh, yes. In two and a half years of doing this show, uh-huh. this is the first book that I just stopped reading in the middle. And <laughs> I read issue one, 
I began issue two. I got about two pages in, and I flipped to the last two pages of issue three, <laughs> and that was all I could handle. <laughs> well, let me be the first to say, you son of a fuck! <laughs> I read every goddamn page oh. of that thing. Oh. Fuck you <laughs> for putting me through that. Oh. That was, this was terrible. It was like this is. Quite possibly the worst comic I have ever read. It's the worst comic I've never read. <laughs> <laughs> Again, fuck you. Um, fuck you. I, I I always try. Like I've I've read some bad ones on this show, and I'm like, well, yeah. you know, we we might want to, you know, there might be something, there might be a some nugget in here that you know is worth talking about, or you know, Eric's gonna soldier through it. I might as well too, but. Yeah, no. I even tried again, like, the next day. I was like, okay, regroup. And I, like, went back to the part where I left off. I was like, no, fuck it. (laughs) It was just so awful. Here's the best thing that these books had going for them. They were quick reads. Yeah, yeah, number one didn't take too long. Yeah, so you should have just powered through it. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I did. You can too. Uh, Rick, let's stop the show right now. Right. And take the ten minutes that it's going to take for you to read uh, the I next two so. issues. I don't think so. Man. He could have been reading this while we were eating. Oh. Yeah. But then my stomach would be all upset. Uh, <laughs> my eyes would be bleeding. It's just so stupid. I think that's what it is. Like, I remember... Oh, it's ridiculous. I read the first two. I read Evil Learning Youth Gone Wild when I was, you know, like... I don't know, 14 or whatever when it came out. And I read the the second series that had, like, all the stellar uh, covers by, like, Chris Bacalo and Joe Quesada or whoever. Like, I can't remember who all... I have no idea. Uh, they were, you know, they had, like, really sweet covers by all these different artists. And uh, and I think I think maybe that was just the right time period or age for me to read that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? And uh, if anyone reads this and they're probably over... 13 and they enjoy it, they might want to th- start thinking about why they enjoy it. Right. Because it is clearly for kids. Right. Uh, it's clearly for kids who uh, think they're being edgy. Yeah. 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 The kids that would, you know, like I loved uh, horror stuff and like, you know, seeing Evil Arnie like explode people or whatever he did in this, you know, right. he blew up the world. Or, yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> um, How do you know you didn't read it? I read the last four pages. <laughs> I read that first issue front to back. <laughs> I read more than a third of this series. Oh man! <laughs> oh god! Have you read like the early Evil Learnings in the last like no. fifteen years? I've never read any Evil Learning at all. Oh okay. Excuse me, Joe. I, I really did like the first Steve Learning series. I thought the art was stellar. Stephen Hughes, I think, was an amazing artist. Stephen Hughes was okay. You know, uh, uh, I mean, not great by any means, but, you know, I mean, I think of his peers, he was uh, better than a lot. I think he was, I think he was... <sighs> could, could, I think what, I think the thing about him that stood out was that he wasn't... That even though he was like the like at the height of his popularity, nineteen ninety four, nineteen ninety five, whatever, uh, the fact that he wasn't drawing exactly like everyone else in that same time period kind of made him stand out a little bit. Yeah, because because he definitely did not have the image style or like you know the the Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld, Mark Silvestri right. aping kind of thing. He like it was more. Uh, more subtle, definitely. It wasn't as bombastic. Right, yeah. But it was super detailed. Uh, I don't want to say it was super detailed. It seemed like there was always, like, tons of stuff, like, tons of, like, little lines on jackets and, like, a lot of stuff in the background. Like, not quite Art Adam style, but, like, more of that realm than of, like, you know, like the guy that did Razor or whatever, you know. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, I can't remember. Because... Uh, well, I didn't read Evil Learning. I did read Lady Death, mm-hmm. and uh, he drew 
like a lot of those. And I always remember his style as being fairly simplistic, uh, borderline cartoony. Uh, and, uh, I mean, but, like, you know, he would draw full backgrounds, but not, right. not like, uh, you know, Art Adams or anything like that. Right. Uh, I think he just had a clean, cartoony, cartoony, but not over the top cartoony style. Right. You know, just like, uh, Kind of like a, a more subtle J. Scott Campbell. Yeah, I can see that. I I think he had a he had a real good eye for like l- how to lay out something though. I mean, yeah, like yeah. like he was a good storyteller and like things just were you know designed well. They looked neat. Like right. every page looked cool. Whereas this looked like something you and your friends would make after uh, you know getting out of junior high school. It was incomprehensible. Yeah. Uh, like. I know I didn't bring it up much uh, when we when we did uh, Takio, but because uh, because he didn't uh, use that in that book that much. But Brian Bendis has a terrible habit of writing out a like a two page spread, but like when you're reading it, you have no idea that it's a two page spread. Yeah, that happened in this. Yeah, that happened in this a one. lot in this book. Well, I only I only ran into it once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's just a mess. It's 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 too bad that this was the final chapter in the Evil Learning Mythos. Right. Because I although I didn't read like several of the miniseries, I, I'd imagine this is one of the worst ones, you know? Right. Just based right. on the, the two I did read. Um yeah. What a way to go out. Uh like a lot of my problems, like, like it was just bad. I mean, you know, the, let, let's lay that down as the the foundation. Yeah, that this was just terrible. Uh, uh, but built on top of that, were the fact that, uh, like, you know, I'd never read an Evil Ernie before this, so I didn't know other than Evil Ernie, I didn't know any of the characters involved. None of them were properly introduced. Right. Uh, uh, no context as to who they were in relation to him. Uh, what was going on? It was almost written like a soap opera without any of the like flashback parts at the beginning. Right. It, it was like you know they assume that you've been keeping up with these characters and you're like you're a diehard fan and right. instead of this being a separate miniseries, it was like issue twenty five of Evil Learning basically. Right, right. The last three issues of Evil Learning. Right. Only, right, yeah. Um, and, I mean, the art did not help. No. Especially, uh, I know you didn't read it, but uh, towards the end, uh, all the characters uh, pretty much uh, gear up for, like, this huge battle. And so they're all wearing, like, body armor with guns and buckles and pouches and pads and all your typical... Late 90s gear. Well, okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, this book was published in like uh, late 1999. Uh, like the the final issue came out in December 99. Every single issue reads like it was written in 1992. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm talking like Marvel Comics scraping the bottom of the barrel, trying to catch up to Image Comics 1992. Right. The bombastic, like just dumb. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and and I like some dumb stuff. I mean, I, I like, like dumb s- shit too. But but it has to be kind of fun, or it has to be just amazingly drawn. Or but this is just everything about this is bad. Yeah, there's nothing good about this there's, book. Uh, dialogue is terrible. It's <laughs> just you know. I would say the best thing about this book is that it was only three issues long, so you don't have to read more than that. But right. you apparently you can just stop reading whenever you want. <laughs> Well, some of us didn't know we had that option. <laughs> well, I, well, I didn't look, clue you in because I figured one of us should have to suffer through it in case, you know. <laughs> you fucking picked it. You should be the one to suffer. <laughs> oh, my reputation is, the, is what's going to suffer because I chose this. <laughs> so I figured you should suffer the actual physical pain of reading it. So, why did you choose this? You know what? This is kind of funny, too. I didn't think about this till just now. Um, someone recommended it 
and loaned it to me. It was the same guy that loaned me the Star Trek graphic novel, Hope of Metal of Peace or Honor or whatever it was called. <laughs> the, the Chris Claremont. Uh, <laughs> I'm never borrowing anything from that guy again. <laughs> Because he came in and uh, he was like, he was like, hey, do you like Evil Ernie? And I said, well, I said, yeah, kind of. I was like, I really liked, you know, the first couple of miniseries, but that's all I ever read. And he's like, oh man, he's like, I just read the final story, uh, the War of the Dead. He's like, he's like, if you want to borrow him, I got him in my car. He's like, it was really good. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, it was awesome. And I was like, okay. And so he brought him back in, and I was like, huh, maybe I'll pick him for the show. <laughs> Next time he says that, though, he's like, I, I found this, uh, you know, book that, uh, you know, Dave Sims has been working on since he quit Cerebus, and I found the originals in that bus station, and I guess he's never going to publish it. I'm like, nah, just keep it. <laughs> just <laughs> keep it. Well, see, in that scenario, though, he never said that he liked it or not. Oh, so. that's true. Okay. So if he's like, it is awful, I'm like, well, I'll give it a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this is uh, really hard to try to have a conversation about this since uh, only one of us read it. I'll pretend. <laughs> you, you bring up how awful something is, and I'll agree with you. <laughs> because I'm sure that was be, would be the opinion I would have. I, I read all of issue one and a, and a fifth of issue three. So... <laughs> We can talk about any of this. <laughs> hmm. Well, I've still actually read more Evil Ernie than you. That's true. Um. <clears throat> you, you didn't read the one that counted, though. <sighs> Did what did you think about uh, the character Smiley of the Button? Wasn't that the most retarded, annoying thing in the book? It was for me. In this book? Yeah. This one that I read that you didn't? Yeah, yeah. that one. Uh, what about, uh, like, just in general? He just had, like, he was supposed to, he's a he's a button that you've only wears that apparently, yeah. I guess he... He gets his powers from, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah apparently it's where he drives his power, and, and he has, like, stupid one-liners and, like, right. and yells, like, uh, you know, coarse things and... Right. It's supposed to be some sort of comedy relief, or it's supposed to be cute. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think it's supposed to be comedy relief. It's awful. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a button. Yeah. That uh, can apparently move on its own. Yeah. 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 Some <laughs> guy wears it as an eye. Yeah, I, I didn't get that either. He was like, yeah. oh yeah, like, like he he escapes. He he leaves you learning. The button. The button leaves evil learning because, because uh, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, they're on a plane at the time uh, with the door open, but apparently, you know, that's fine. Yeah, uh, you know, being sucked out of the, the plane. That's fine. Right. And there's sort of physics involved there. Right. Right. Well, he's dead. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. He doesn't <laughs> care. <laughs> um. He, yeah, he falls out of the plane and then lands directly in the hand of Evil Ernie's enemy. Coincidentally, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like that would happen. Who then uh, sticks the button through his eyeball. And where's it? Where's my patch? You know, we've all... Yeah. We've all... We remember that trend in the late 90s. People <laughs> wearing their buttons through their eyes. Oh. It's awful. Um, and, like, there's all these, like, little badass-looking things, you know? Right. Like, where Evil Ernie's, like, on the last page of issue one where he's, like, yelling, cool. Right. With his arms in the air because of, uh, you know, all the, the undead being slaughtered. And... Well, he's, he's reached his destination, which is the uh, stockpile of... Uh, Nuclear arms. Right. Uh, oh, then there's the uh, doctor who looks like Cable. He does look exactly like Cable by a guy who drew Cable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he probably drew Cable before this too. Probably, yeah. So that's a pretty good thing. Yeah. 
although his character I think existed before that. He, yeah, I mean, they refer to him as if he was in older Evil Learning stories. I don't remember him, but... Oh, maybe he was the big guy. Wow, he probably was the guy from the first series, but he was, like, way different and an interesting character, actually. Not, you know, the same one that was in here. Right. But, yeah, he's, like, a crazy doctor who speaks with, uh... Yeah, doctor, an educated man. Uh, speaks in slang and, uh, you know, uh, drops the G's off of, uh, words that have I-N-G at the end. All right. You know, eventually wears, uh, spandex and pouches and carries a big gun. And, Much like Cable would. Yeah, right, right. Uh, and, like, the first issue, he's making a robot zombie thing who, they have a conversation and it's retarded. <laughs> It's, it's retarded. It is. It's like it's retarded. It's like drunken teenagers. Yeah, dr- made this count. And you know what? The idea of evil learning is not a bad one. Like, like I get the concept. I dig it. Yeah. You know, like I'd like to see this done. You know, by people with ability. I swear, the first miniseries, of, unless I'm just rose-colored glasses, remembering right. it. You probably are. I remember being like, "Wow, this is really good." I, I guarantee you, the art was better. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, I hate I hate slagging on artists because I think, you know, there's different styles for different people. I mean, art is you know very subjective, but right. but it just it doesn't work. Like it doesn't get across. Like it's supposed to be scary and like dark, and it just looks Ridiculous. cheesy and dumb. Yeah. yeah. And there's no storytelling ability. Right. Uh, the guy doesn't have any grasp of anatomy, but it's supposed to be gritty and, and realistic. Right. You know, but but it's it's just bad. Well, and it's just it is lowest common denominator the type of art that you would find in nineteen nineties comic books. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just it's totally the color work's not bad. Uh, even that's not great. Yeah. Uh, I th- I think compared to the uh, like imagine this in black and white, I don't think it would be any better. No, like, not at all. Like, there's actually some tones and, like, right. different shades and kind of a mood set with the color. Like, some of it looks kind of neat, but... Yeah. But, yeah, but it's, just, it's also not helping the art either. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not making anything clearer, for right. sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but it really is. It's like it's pandering. It's, it's a book that panders. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you, you obviously... Didn't read it, but in the uh, letters column of the the third issue, uh, there's like a a letter from Brian Polito about his thought process about the, the story and all that. I actually did read that. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I actually did read that. Yeah. I was like, maybe this will be good. There's no pictures. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he he writes like this was like some great, beautiful epic. Yeah, that, like this that, was like. Know, his swan song. Yeah, yeah. This was, you know, this is his legacy left on Earth, you know, evil Ernie, War yeah. of the Dead. <laughs> oh, what, does he, like, Chaos is gone. I know the Lady Death comics are still coming out through Boundless. Yeah. Does he do those? Uh, I think he writes those, yeah. Does he really? Wow. Yeah. Um, so he's not giving up? No, no. I think because Chaos folded and went into bankruptcy. And all the characters went for sale in an auction. Mm-hmm. And I think through like some weird like backdoor dealings he wound up purchasing the rights to Lady Death. Okay. You know. Well oh, no, Crossgen put Lady Death out for You're a while. Right. He sold them to Crossgen. Or he licensed them to Crossgen. Okay. But then Crossgen folded. Right. <laughs> now doesn't Disney own Crossgen? Mm-hmm. Or Marvel? Marvel, Marvel. owns Crossgen. Yeah. yeah. Disney Marvel, yeah. Okay. But uh, he owned the Lady Death. Right. Like, he was just licensing, licensing them to cross <clears throat> Now he's licensing them through Avatar. Wow. Wow. And I guess other people own the other characters. Yeah, I don't think there's been any, you know, Evil or any Chastity or Bedlam or whatever the other one was. I I do know that there was an Evil Ernie hack slash crossover. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. Uh, don't know much about it, though. Uh, 
It's kind of weird if somebody else owns Evil Ernie, considering that Evil Ernie is supposed to look like Brian Bolito. <laughs> Maybe they which, can... Which also sort of... Uh, explain some stuff. Explain some stuff about how this is pretty much a lot of, like, uh, you know, teenage wish wish fulfillment yeah. type, you know. Like you said, like, like this is something he probably came up with in junior high. And, and he was like, I'm going to keep this going. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the first, I think the first miniseries was called Youth Gone Wild, which yeah. is a Skid Row song. Right. And I think, I know he either titled the second miniseries, like some other, like, metal s- thing. sort of metal right, kind of right, thing. Right, right. Or, uh, or I know there was, like, at least, like, Evil Ernie would yell quotes throughout the book that, you know, right. were, like, Iron Maiden or... You know, Guns N' Roses lyrics or something. Right. Oh man. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Ha- I'm sorry you endured it. You, you're the martyr. <laughs> uh, it was an experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was looking forward to this too. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I kind of was too. Honestly, I was like, this will be way different. Yeah. Like, you know, I thought at the very least this would be fun. Yeah. Like yeah. it would just be like dumb fun, but it yeah. took. It took itself pretty seriously. Oh, yeah. It was like, this is the end of the world, the death cloud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> it was just so stupid. Yeah. Incredibly bad. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, like, uh, like, like, even though I've uh, made well clear my, my dislike for certain... Uh, Writers or artists that we've we've had, uh, we've reviewed their their works. Oh yeah. Uh, which uh, I will say, maybe uh, David Heatley stuff uh, better than this. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this didn't make you as angry. Did not make me angry. Right. It was just bad. Uh, but. Uh, kind of feel bad for just slagging on the creative team on this book. Really? Like, I don't know why, but there's a part of me that that just... You know, I think it's because... I know what you mean, but at the same time, it's not like... Apparently they do think that, you know, they're doing their thing and, like, this is their baby and, like, they're real proud of it, but, I mean, there's... there's no substance to it. To it. There's. It, it's not like. Right. You know. It's not like. It has any sort of. I'm not that it should have a message. I'm. Just, ah, there's just no reason to to make more than one evil or any miniseries. Right. Right. But that's that's what I think I'm getting from this. Like that was cool. They did a four issue evil or any miniseries in the late eighties or early nineties. Right. That's awesome. Stop there. You know. Well, again, they're, they're like, just beating a dead horse here. I think. I think there's. I think there's a concept in there that works, and I think it could be really cool, and I think that he could get the ending that he got in this book that he wants, you know, to, to work. Right. Uh, I just think he went about it completely the wrong way. That, you know, he just... Uh, it, like, it's an idea that needs refining. Yeah. Uh, like, I think it really could potentially work as a really good book. And as a really cool character and concept, and you know, as a sort of uh, finite, ongoing series, I think it could work. You know? Really? Yeah. Uh, I just think that uh, this is not the way to do it. Yeah. This uh, was the first draft of a story that needed to be developed. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because it just there's so much about it that just doesn't work that uh, betrays sort of what he was trying to do. You know, and it's just cliche dialogue. Oh, yeah. Bad characters. Yeah, the dialogue is awful. Yeah, terrible art. Uh, bad storytelling. You know, just uh, having Smiley the psychotic button as comic relief oh. and just bad puns yeah. and shit like that. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> but, uh, and then, yeah, and then just taking every sort of sci-fi and horror movie cliche and clumping them all in there and uh, just yeah yeah and, and like things don't make sense throughout the book 
Look, uh, look again. I know you didn't read it. But, uh... Well, why would I? It was awful. Uh, who would? Who would soldier through? Well, like the, the very end of the book, uh, Evil Ernie gets his wish. He destroys the world, essentially. But there are survivors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's like a, a dozen nuclear blasts yeah. on, on, the, on the face of the planet. Like yeah. every continent is blown up. Yep. And then they cut to a scene of people going, well, it's time to rebuild. Or yep. whatever. And you're like, what? <laughs> and, and those people were at ground zero. Yeah. Like like at the place where everything started, where a bunch of missiles were targeted for. Where they hit. And uh, yeah, they're fine. And they're going to. You know, there was one panel in the last issue that I thought was kind of drawn well. It was like a two-page spread of Evil Ernie being blown up. Oh, yeah. That, that was kind of neat. That yeah, was neat. It, yeah. it was like very, like, uh, a lot of line work. Yeah. Like, like um, he's talking to his severed head at the same time. Right, right. Oh. I think uh, perhaps maybe that was like the very first thing that guy drew. And then, uh, he submitted like, that, and they're like, yeah. Wasted all of his energy. And then it was like, oh, I got Three more issues of this scrap to draw. I, like, I still gotta draw Hulk twenty ninety nine. That book was long canceled by this time. Oh yeah, he was gearing up for static. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's all right. And not not that I quit reading it. I'm sorry that you read it. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. <clears throat> As I stand behind my bailing out in the middle. <laughs> you were, uh, yeah, I don't know. Don't do that again. Don't do that again. I, I, I wouldn't plan on doing it the first time. But if it's this horrible, you, uh, you should have, you really should have stuck with it. Yeah. Because, uh, because I did. And this is bullshit. <laughs> That uh, he did. This is uh, this is a partnership here. Uh, we we work together oh. to make this show as best as we can. And when someone's not pulling their <laughs> weight, uh, it leads to me talking for forty minutes. I know you've slept through the middle of like three movies we've watched. Uh, yeah, that's different. <laughs> I wished I could have fell asleep I, while reading this, but I watched the majority. Of those I, re- I read. Well, I read the half. I'd say about half. Apparently he did not read half. He just said he didn't read One half. in uh, three. Well, part of three. One in part of three. You read the first issue and you said you read like, the last four pages of the third issue. Yeah, and then the first couple pages of the second issue. So I'd say about one and a half altogether. If you add it all up. Which is more than you, the listener, should read of this series. No, Which... yeah. Don't ever read this. <laughs> uh, but me falling asleep in movies. I fall asleep for maybe a ten minutes. Right. Yeah. That's nothing. I just skipped ten minutes of reading. <laughs> that is true. That's different. It's different. Okay. It. I'll soldier different. through. I'll soldier through from now on. Unless it's a learning book. I'm fairly certain that'll never happen again. <laughs> I know I won't pick one. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, welcome back to Gutter Trash. Hello. We're Aloha. Here. Aloha to you. Hola. Mm. Hello. Ooh. Um, That's all I got. Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, oh. <coughs> <coughs> ah, Peterson. Wow. That's goodbye. Oh, it? okay. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Or I just ordered a sausage. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you could have. You could have ordered a sausage. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so I'm still pissed. Yeah, but yeah. I'll get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you blame me? Really? I can't. I really can't. I'm mad, but I can't blame. Yeah. You. I totally see where you're coming yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is awfulness. I can't believe, okay, here's what I'm trying to remember, or what I'm trying to wrap my head around, that this guy that loaned them to me, who, you know, he reads a lot of comics, he has a file, um, it's not like he's just an Evil Ernie fan. Right. You know, he, he reads like a plethora of He's also of a Star Trek fan. He's also a Star Trek fan. He, I, I think he likes, like he reads The Goon, I believe he reads, uh. That's a good series. Yeah, yeah. He, he reads, I mean, he understands that, I mean, he's. He's been exposed to things that are good. Right. You know? Um, <coughs> I don't know if he understands what's good and what's bad. Right, right. But I think he does. Right. Like, I've, I've talked to him about different artists and writers before, and we were like, yeah, that guy's great, and, you know, he met such and such a guy, and blah, blah, blah. But uh, I just don't know how you could read this, A, and enjoy it. Right. And B, like... If you did enjoy it, you would have to be like, okay, this obviously is my guilty pleasure. Right, This right. is the thing I do when I'm alone. Right. I never tell anyone about this. I am ashamed to like <laughs> yeah. this. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, a, like his, his friend calls and like, what are you doing? He's like, uh, nothing. You know, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. <you know, laughs> I'm just clipping my fingernails. You know, but he thought to be like, hey, you should read this. <laughs> and like... He will forever be associated with this book for me. Right, right. You know? Well, this and the Star Trek. <laughs> this and the Medal of Honor, yeah. yeah. whatever that book was. Was it Medal of Honor? I don't think so. Okay. Right. Uh, um, uh, well, I was, maybe it's like a thing where, I was, I, was, I don't know, I was trying to think, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know he he likes Frank Miller. Well, I was trying to think like you know maybe maybe it's a thing like how all your magic customers think that you're into magic. Oh right. Because yeah. you just happen to work with it on a daily basis and know a lot about it. Right. You know, is, is it like a similar situation where it was like, oh well, you work in a comic shop, so you must like all comics. Yeah. Here's my shitty comics that I like. Yeah. You would like them too. Yeah. He's like, oh, this guy, this guy can finally tell my dirty little secrets. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> he walks in. He's like, oh, I rape babies. <laughs> I killed my grandma, and I read evil learning. It feels so good to say this aloud. <laughs> I'm like, you read evil learning? What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> he reads Walking Dead. I think Chew it's maybe. A good book. Chew, it's a good yeah. books. Yeah. It's a good books. Exactly. Uh even Lock and Key, which I don't know as good, has garnered some uh, attention and awards. Yeah, people seem to like it. He it likes was almost it. a TV show. Yeah, he likes that. Yeah. But then again, it was almost an evil learning movie too, so Maybe know. he was real high when he read this. <laughs> or drunk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Could be. Could be. I don't know. I do not know. I will not say his name aloud in case, uh, you know. He listens. <clears throat> yeah, in case he listens. I'm sure he knows that. Uh, oh, he knows I'm talking about him. Okay. But I don't, I don't want to, like. Expose him to his, right. his uh, peers in the public. Right, Because right. they all listen. Obviously. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want his house to get burned down while he's sleeping or anything by townsfolk. <laughs> I just want him to stop loaning me shitty comics. I don't even mind if he loaned me good comics. Right. Like if he switched it up a bit. Right, right. 
So far, he's, he's 0 for 2. Yeah. yeah. Well, he did. There's one other thing he loaned me to read on the same day he loaned me The War of the Dead, and I actually enjoyed it. Okay. He, he loaned me uh, the current issue of Entertainment Weekly at the time, and it had an article uh, where they interviewed Mr. Garfield, who's playing Spider-Man. Oh, okay. I don't know his first name. Andrew. Andrew Garfield. And uh, that was interesting. Like, there were some good photos of... You know, learned some stuff. It was like, well, that was that was cool. I read it while I was eating breakfast one day, <coughs> and then uh, then there was this. <laughs> but maybe that's the thing. He always needs to loan me two things at once. Right, and one of them has to be not a comic. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you're still an asshole for not reading this <laughs> and forcing me to. Right. Uh, uh, but I'll get over it. At least it wasn't like a you know twelve issue maxi series oh, or I would kill you. Area. I would kill you. <laughs> if if I don't you know, oh yeah, I only read the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I would absolutely kill you. I'd have killed you on air, <laughs> <laughs> and I would have released the show. Wow, that went awesome with you dying on it, and wow. then uh, wait until one of our listeners calls the cops. Maybe we would have finally got an iTunes review. <laughs> I can't believe he killed that guy on the on the show. A plus. <laughs> yeah, they probably thought it would be a hoax and give us one star. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are obviously scripted. It's fake. Yeah. <laughs> a screwdriver plunging into a neck would not sound like that. <laughs> Man. Evil fucking Ernie. Evil. It was evil. Yeah, it was, was evil. <clears throat> I bet my friend Amanda would like it. Oh yeah, you know you should not let her listen to this episode, but have her oh, read she these. Won't. Okay, <laughs> but have her read these. <laughs> so she, well, I got to take them back to the guy though, because yeah, yeah. he actually asked me about them. He was in a couple days ago, and I was like, "Oh, uh, I need to get those back to you." I didn't bother to tell him I loaned them to someone else because I don't know <laughs> if that's proper etiquette. It probably isn't, but uh, you know, I know you're. Trustworthy? No, I'm not gonna do it right now. I know where you are. Yeah. If uh, you if you decide to sell them, you probably would have, you know, not thinking about it, you would have took them to Mavericks to sell. Right, yeah, I would have yeah. just bought them from you and then, you know, added the <laughs> amount that I paid you to your next purchase. Right, you right. would never know. I just yeah. put it in your charge card. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All is well, it ends well. It does indeed. So, uh, yeah. Anything other than shitty comics, anything else fun going on or um, anything cool or there's a, there's a new Ultimate Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard anything about that. I have. <laughs> <laughs> and up until yesterday I had heard nothing negative. <laughs> oh please tell me this story. <laughs> well, well, okay, let me start off by saying the one really positive thing I heard the other day. This lady calls up, and we had just sold out of the book. Like, we got uh, a few extra than normal, right. Ultimate Fallout. Um, first appearance of the new Spider-Man. First appearance of Miles... Uh, Miles Morales. Morales. He is a half-black, half-Mexican uh, uh, teenager mm-hmm. who somehow is the new Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Which uh, his, it up. his origin will be revealed in the new Ultimate Spider-Man number one, which is next month, right? Uh, I believe. Yes, yes. And uh, I think it's yeah, September seventh, I believe. Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> but this lady calls up and she says that her grandson is uh, half Latino, half black, and uh, his name is Miles, uh-huh. and his favorite superhero is Spider-Man. And she uh, wants a copy, so it's That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. This is like, you know, really cool. Yeah, and uh, I'm like, wow, there's a, there's a, you know, there's some excitement, there's some relevance there. You know, that's awesome. And then uh, yesterday, <laughs> um, this older white gentleman comes in who uh, buys some comics, but he admits that he doesn't read them. He just buys the ones he likes the covers for, and he you know, checks them off his checklist, and then he puts them in the boxers or whatever. He doesn't read them. doesn't like them. Uh, <laughs> but he was really upset 
that uh, he was like, have you heard about that new Spider-Man book? And I was like, uh, which one? And then he was like, you know, he's like, the one where he's like black or Mexican or something. And I was like, oh, yeah, the ultimate fallout. Yeah, he's, you know, I was like, yeah, Marvel's kind of doing some different stuff. And, you know, right. he's like, wow, why is he, why is he Spider-Man? He's like, he's just supposed to be Peter Parker now? And I was like, well, no, actually, in the Ultimate Universe, Peter Parker got killed, and you know, this new fellow is taking over. I'm not sure the specifics because I don't read the book, sure. but uh, you know. And he goes, "Oh, he's like, why are they doing that?" He's like, "I, he's black, and he's, oh, I should just, I just shouldn't say anything." <laughs> he was just upset, and he even knew that he was just about about to spout some racial slurs, and right, right. he just. Stopped himself there. Well, at least he he had that much forethought. <laughs> yeah. To 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 pause and then say, "Well, oh, okay, I'm I'm about to step over a line. I'm old and I'm an asshole." Right. right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, and yeah, it, it's sort of like admitting that. Yeah. Like like he he just basically came out and admitted that he was old and he's an asshole. Yeah. And, and he stopped himself and said, "Okay, I'm old and I'm an asshole, but I'm gonna step over a line." Yeah. And, 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 that's kinda, I shouldn't. That's cool of him. That is almost reasonable. <laughs> when you go online <laughs> and find any article about this same story and yeah. read any of the comments and find out what people say <laughs> when they don't stop themselves. Right. They don't have that, that off switch that yeah, just, yeah. just pour it out. <sighs> Soul crushing is what I call that. Yeah. Holy Christ. <laughs> They're just really upset that he's not... Black. Okay, so it's just that, that it's not that he's not Peter Parker. Well, there's two factions. Mm-hmm. There's the one faction, which is your, your basic comic nerd faction, which is, why are they changing this? Yeah. <laughs> at all. He wants Peter Parker as Spider-Man. There's that faction. And then there's the faction of he's black and Mexican and gay in the future. What is he? <laughs> I'm not reading that. <laughs> should, I, should I explain that part? Uh, what was it? Uh, the, the gay in the future. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, can't, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, the story broke. You know, that uh, Marvel was introducing this uh, Miles Morales as uh, the new half-black, half-Latino Spider-Man. And they interviewed Brian Bendis, the writer, and they interviewed the artist, a, uh, an Italian woman named Sarah Pacelli. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Uh, great artist, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, she and another guy by the name of David LaFuente were drawing the book prior to uh, the whole Death of Spider-Man Shake-up. thing. Yeah. Uh, before uh, before Bagley came back and ruined the book again. <laughs> oh God, I hate Mark Bagley. Uh, <laughs> but uh, is like, it because he's black or Latino? Uh, it's because he's cracking. Oh. Uh, <laughs> is he really? He's cracking. One of my ex girlfriends uh, had a story about that. Really? I think I've told it here on the show before. That he's a crackhead. Uh, oh man, we shouldn't be. Uh, uh, no, should we? Should maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> he's not a crackhead. <laughs> Maybe at one point in time he was. Okay. Uh, wow. Hey, ever seen a picture of him? No. Could be a crackhead. Wow, never have. At yeah. least met that. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we are the uh, U.S. Weekly of comic book podcasts. Just a rumor. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Not confirmed. Yeah. This is just a fun story. Just, uh, you can take it how you want. Yeah, my, uh, my, my ex-girlfriend, uh, she, she was a collector of original comic book art. She had a uh, an amazing Spider-Man page drawn by Mark Bagley, inked by Randy Emberlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had met Randy Emberlin to, to buy the page. And uh, Randy Emberlin said that he wound up drawing most of that issue because Mark Bagley was a crackhead and didn't do any of his work. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> This is all hearsay. This is all hearsay. <laughs> Third hand. Yeah. Yeah, what does that guy know? Yeah, this yeah. is ten years ago when I was dating this girl, so... Whatever. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Totally could have cleaned up. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for him. Yeah. 
He did a hundred some issues of Ultimate Spider-Man, you know, and, and all of them were bad. Wow. Uh, wow. Because I don't like him. Don't like his art. That's an impressive run, though. You'd think you'd have to drink a lot of coffee or do something to stay up. Uh, that is true. To get that sort of energy and yeah, like, stay up late at night some to work. Some of those are bi-weekly, too. Yeah, wow. Yeah. He must have... He must have... He, he must have uh, crack piped it up. Yeah. And <laughs> I'll say um, probably a lot of Mountain Dew or something, yeah. some sort of substance yeah. in his body. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what were you talking about? Um. Oh yeah, <laughs> the uh, the new artist on oh, yeah. Spider Man. Uh, great artist, uh, Italian woman named Sarah Pacelli, interviewed uh, by numerous news outlets about this whole new Ultimate Spider Man thing. Uh, and her basic quote was that. Uh, you know, she's excited to be a part of this, you know, with its history, you know, in the making, and that, uh, you know, maybe someday in the future, they can create superheroes who are black, Latino, or even gay, and uh, have it just be normal and not a newsworthy story. Wow. And there were a couple of uh, news outlets who then took that quote and said that, uh, new Spider-Man, half black, half Latino, gay in the future? <laughs> Of course. Why not? <clears throat> well, she's right, though. Yeah. That, would, that would be cool if that wasn't, like, you know, if North Star didn't have to proclaim it on a two-page spread or, right. or uh, you know, it didn't have to become instantly collectible if a superhero was black. Right. You know, it's just, you know, a character yeah. with a human uh, personality and, uh, you know, uh, individuality. Right. That'd be neat. And, uh, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a reader of this book. Uh, I've been reading it since the get-go. I've got an opinion on this thing. Does anybody want to hear my opinion? No? Uh-oh. What's your opinion? My I opinion is I don't care. Yeah. Uh, here, here, here's my, uh, my, my full opinion on the new Ultimate Spider-Man. Not that anybody asked that I had to force it out of you. I'm kind of curious. Uh. You didn't have to force it out of me. <laughs> I am curious what you <laughs> Um, I think that, uh, you know, like, you know, for the most part, I don't care, you know, uh, first of all, it's comic books, you know, Peter Parker's gonna come back at some point. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, hell, uh, Marvel's pretty much already hinted that the Human Torch is coming back, uh, in November, because, uh, guess what, that's when issue number 600 of Fantastic Four oh, would be. Perfect. So, that's probably going to happen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just comics. I've been reading long enough to, to know the gimmicks and know what's going to happen. Right. Uh, there are a lot of people who are bitching because, uh, like, oh, it's the ultimate comics line, so it doesn't matter. But, you know, it's a book that's been going for ten years now, written by the same guy for that amount of time. That's impressive. That's impressive, and that kind of matters at this point. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter that it's the ultimate line. It's a book that's had 160-some issues. Kind of matters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, you know, it, it's Brian Bendis. I think he's a pretty good writer, and I think uh, one of the best things he works on is Ultimate Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. If... Uh, this is uh, the thing that he wants to do, this is a uh, character that he's created, then, you know, all I can say is, uh, you know, if you've enjoyed his work up to this point, then uh, it's probably just going to be a lot of the same. And so, that, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter, you know, as long as, uh, as long as the new character is likable, and not just a brown version of Peter Parker. Right. If he has, like, his own distinct personality and reason for being then who cares? Yeah. Uh, that, that brings up an interesting point, though. Do you think this is something that, you know, Brian Bendis is like, hey, I've got this great idea, and I really want this to happen. It's, like, part of my overall plan right. for the series. Or do you think Marvel was like, let's shake things up and do this, Brian? I think partially mostly that. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, the whole thing is a gimmick. I and, mean, you know, it's not overlooked that. It's business. I'm sure they doubled their sales this month. Oh, yeah. They, they, they're, they're getting press. Yeah. You know, people are paying attention. People are talking about it. We're talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Marvel's getting what they want. Right. Uh, yeah, I think we ordered double our order on this, this yeah. one. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, they're, uh, yeah, yeah, there's, I think there's a big part of it that is, you know, Marvel saying, hey, let's, let's do something, you know. Uh, but I think, 
I think when you have a writer of Bendis' stature on that book, and he's been doing it for so long, that I don't think he'd be down for it if he couldn't find a way to do it right. correctly. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Sort of like uh, <clears throat> the issue of Spider-Man that came out, I think it was number 36 or something after September 11th, right. where Straczynski wrote that pretty awesome issue Yeah, that wasn't just like, you know, some sort of cash grab, like, right, right, uh, right. you know, uh, based off, you know, people right. people's, uh, you know, willingness to invest in tragedy. Right, right, Like, right. It, it, was, uh, it was actually good. And, right, uh, right. I'm sure this is probably Marvel the same thing. said, hey, let's do this, and Straczynski said, well, let me think of a way to do this. Right. And, and he did, and I think that's where Brian Bendis came up with this. Uh, and, uh, like, again, you probably haven't read a whole bunch of the stuff online about it, but, uh, um, he, he sort of came up with uh, the, the basic concept from, uh, there's an actor by the name of Donald Glover, a, uh, a black gentleman. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's on the show Community. Uh, he, he was in the movie Mystery Team. And I guess uh, back when they were announcing the Spider-Man remake, that uh, he, he lobbied, partially as a joke, to, to, you know, to play, Spider- play Peter yeah. Parker in... The immense racism within <laughs> comic fans uh, reared its ugly head. Same people, probably, that are posted about this one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then I guess in the season premiere of the current season of Community, like the he had like a dream sequence at the beginning of the episode, and then he woke up and he was in bed and he was wearing Spider-Man pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bendis said, ah, he, "He looks kind of cool, like in a Spider-Man costume." And so that's kind of where he got the scene really? of his idea. Does he kind of? I, I'm not familiar with the community. Uh, I think I've seen like five minutes of it. Yeah. it. Is the character like based on his physical features? The Ultimate Spider-Man character? Yeah. Uh, I don't know because I mean I haven't read the book yet. Okay. Uh, I've just seen like the one panel that they've shown, right? Which is just sort of him kind of peeling off the mask, right? So like, what's his name? Awesome. Miles who? The character. Character Miles Morales. Morales. Okay. Yeah. Like Rags Morales? Uh, huh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Would that be interesting if this became one of those like self fulfilling prophecy things like where uh uh you know Brian Hitch drew Sam Jackson right. as as Nick Fury now he is gonna play Nick Fury. Right, right. That'd be kinda neat. Yeah. If like this all cycles back around and Probably won't happen. <clears throat> Probably if, if it's even based on him at all. Right, right. right. I don't know that it yeah. is. Uh, but because you know, again, I think that Peter Parker is going to return at some point. Right, yeah, that's uh, just the way comics work. Uh, I also know that Bantus also has uh, two adopted daughters who are, uh, you know, African or from some other country. Okay, so you know, he's partially writing for that as well. So oh, that's cool. So you know, it's you know, I mean, he's got a personal stake in it. You know, outside of. Him just having a job that he right. wants to keep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious if that was his idea or Marvel's idea. Yeah. But, you know, either way, I'm going to continue buying it until it's bad. Yeah. You know? And it's the way to look at it. Right. I, it's the same way I looked at uh, reading Evil Learning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And then the, uh, the other big news of the week, which... Uh, Came on the heels of uh, new Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, as soon as I saw uh, the the article, I just thought to myself, "Oh Christ, here we go." Uh, they announced uh, who was going to play Perry White in the uh, mm-hmm. new Superman movie. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah, because he's a good actor. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what race Perry White is. Yeah. Because it's just Clark Kent's boss. Yeah. But. Going online, you wouldn't think that's the case. <laughs> Somebody uh, put put on hold a uh, Perry White action figure at Mavericks today, and I thought that was kind of funny. Uh. <laughs> maybe he's like, you know, maybe he's putting it on hold to see if like they shoot up on eBay in the next day right, or two. Right. Like Perry White, back when he was actually white. Yeah, great season ghost. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> what else happened in the, the world of entertainment? Um, they, they released the uh, the first official image of the new Superman. Well, I heard about that. I saw that on the Yahoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see the picture? Yeah, I mean, I saw the little tiny one. I didn't even bother to click on it, actually. Uh, uh, so, uh, is it cool? Yeah, I don't know. Like, is it a knee pad? Uh, no, no knee pads. Mm-hmm. Uh, totally not accurate to the comics. No knee pads, no collar. Is he flying? Uh, he's not flying. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, the suit is, uh, I mean, it could just be the lighting of the, the 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 photo, but the suit looks really dark, like like almost like a dark blue gray. Yeah, it reminded me of something from the the Sin City movie posters. Or uh, what I saw. Like well, this next stuff is Zack Snyder, mm. who you know apparently refuses to uh, make a real movie anymore. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> after Sucker Punch. Uh, you mean after Dawn of the Dead? <laughs> Well, Zucker Bunch was not based on anything, right? No, but uh, I'm just saying that uh, Dawn of the Dead was the last time, and the first time, really, that he ever shot a movie like it was an actual movie. Oh, uh, you mean like with just like backgrounds? You know, backgrounds yeah. and actors and okay. you know, special effects and, you know. Typical movie stuff. Yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like on, a, on a film stock. Was it Watchmen? Watchmen was like that? No, Watchmen was a lot more like a... Sucker Punch or uh, or uh, 300 with the human green screen stuff green or? screeny you know there's a lot of sets and lots of uh, slow-mo fast forward action yeah know, he's he's definitely whole uh, scenes shot to as basically music videos yeah you know he definitely has that yeah. you know. and Dawn of the Dead was the only real movie he's made so far and I say this as a person who really liked Watchmen mm-hmm. yeah me too. Right. It's definitely got a stylized thing, but I, I don't know if it, you know, was a detriment, really. Uh, I think it was. Uh, at least I think it's going to be. Like uh, if he just stays that one trick pony. Kind I of. think so. I think after 300, that's his thing now. Yeah. Because Dawn of the Dead, great movie. Uh, filmed like a traditional movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, 300 was, you know, an experiment that... Uh, I don't know if he got into his head that that's how all movies have to be made now. <laughs> all right. And, uh, uh, I liked Watchmen. Uh, Sucker Punch was, uh, not good. Uh, but for completely different reasons than other people say it's not good. <laughs> right. I still haven't seen <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, I know your lady friend loved it, so. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know several people who really, really liked it. Yeah. Uh, I think it was an interesting failure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also, yeah, it was the first movie he's ever done that uh, wasn't based on something. So that yeah. was nice to see. Right. Yeah. Maybe he'll go back to that eventually. I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, my hopes for Superman is that I hope he uh, scales back some of his uh, personal uh, style elements for, you know, for this movie. That, that he just uh, focuses on the fact that it's a Superman movie. Yeah. That, yeah, Superman's so, like, classic, you know? Yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to see any Matrix-y kind of yeah. Superman. I mean, yeah. not that there shouldn't be, like, different versions of Superman, but that just seems like the wrong right. way to go with that character. Right. But, uh, but the costume, you know, I think it looks okay. You know, like I said, a little too dark. Uh, I think, uh, the S-Shield looks good. Um, I don't understand why all movie superhero costumes now have to have some sort of hexagonal pattern all over it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't get that. Is, is it to make it look more, like, oh, like outlandish and, like, majestic somehow? I don't know. Like, like yeah, I just don't get it. Ever since uh, the first Spider-Man, that's mm-hmm. every, every spandex-based superhero <laughs> costume right. doesn't have that on there. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, a couple of my friends noticed that he seems to be wearing like some sort of bracelet cuff thing on the suit. Huh. Yeah. Like a Shazam bracelet kind of? Yeah, just look like it's the same color as the suit, but it's like this thing that's just on his wrists. Hmm. Uh, I didn't notice him. Uh, but I do think that he is not wearing the red underwear. 
Oh. Maybe he is, but you just can't see it because it's under his pants. Well, possibly. But, uh, like, look, the position that he's in and the lighting, like, that entire area is in shadows. Yeah, okay. Uh, I took the photo into Photoshop and I brightened it. Did you? Yeah. Wow. And I think it's all solid blue. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You, like, really wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. <clears throat> that is cool. Yeah. Man, I'm sure I'll watch it. I'll watch it. You know, it's, it's a Superman movie, and for the most part, I'm, I'm really rooting for Zack Snyder to be a good director. Do you know who's writing it? Uh, yeah, uh, a guy that I don't like. Oh, uh, David funny. Goyer. Oh, the, isn't he the Mesa Matrix guy, isn't he? No. Where do, he, he wrote uh, all the Blade, Blade. movies. And uh, he wrote uh, Batman Begins and Dark Knight. I thought he had something to do with one of the Matrix movies. Too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I don't, he he's a good writer when uh, someone else uh, takes over his work, like uh, like a Christopher Nolan or a uh, or a uh, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, but uh, left to his own devices, he is not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that's the blade stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, not the Christopher Nolan thing. Right. The, yeah. The Batman thing. Yeah. yeah. Is it Batman? Christopher Nolan? Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> that's enough. Yeah. I've learned. Uh, I've learned a fuck of a lot more about the the new Batman movie than I ever wanted to. Uh, that's too bad. I know I, you didn't want to. I've been trying my hardest to stay away from from that, and yet every website I go to has uh, new pictures from the set. <laughs> And, like, today there was video, oh. which at least I had the option not to watch. All right. <laughs> but the pictures are just right there. Yeah. So, so I've seen Bane. I've seen Catwoman. I've seen Batman. I've seen the kid from Third Rock from the Sun. Really? Yeah. Cobra Commander? Yeah. Does he play Bane? No. Oh. The other guy from the Inception movie does. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Huh. Huh. Can't think of uh, the old guy's name. I was trying to think of the old guy's name. Michael Caine. Michael, not, not Michael Caine. Not He's that Alfred. Old guy. <laughs> Alfred's right. not Bane. Oh my god. <laughs> what if he was? <laughs> now there's your movie right Ooh, there. That would be. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Let's do this. Like Batman walks down into the cave and he sees Bane like exercising. Yeah. And uh, Alfred's like, I didn't know you were going to be back so soon. <laughs> He's like, oh my god. Now no, there's a movie. Back. That is a movie. Yeah, he breaks it back. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because he's old. Yeah. <laughs> no, Bane. Oh, I thought you meant he was... Alfred Bane. Well, exercising. No, yeah. <laughs> old, old people should be careful while exercising. They even, should be. Even yeah. if they have that venom pumping through their veins. Probably yeah. just makes, leaves them more fragile. Yeah. 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 It's like overuse of steroids will make your ball shrink. And your, yeah. Oh, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention how buff you look, yeah. but... Okay. It's hard not to, though. I walk in the I've room. also been trying not to look directly at your balls. <laughs> well, it's easy to do because they're so, so tiny. tiny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, movies. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one last thing. Uh, fuck the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. Uh, um, last last week, uh, Duncan Vergredo on Twitter. Uh, put out a warning saying, hey, if you want to avoid gigantic spoilers for the final issue of the current Hellboy Mini, don't read this article. And, like, had a link to that article. Like, don't read this if you don't want spoilers. And just throughout the day, continuously said, hey, don't read that article on comic book resources if you don't want spoilers about the next Hellboy issue. Right. And so I wound up just going to a random website and, uh... Just right there was like, hey, here are the spoilers for the next Hellboy issue. <laughs> but, and it was like, not like something you had to click on, it was just right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah people suck. Yeah, so fuck the internet. <laughs> That's why I don't look at it. Yeah, I wish I couldn't. I want to I wanna cut this fucking <laughs> chain off of my ankle. I See, I just look at the sites like uh, that my friends... Are, do or if, or uh, you know like maybe some news about I don't know some of my favorite artists who I don't know what they're even working on. But yeah, I, I don't think I could look at comic book resources or any of that stuff. 
Like, I mean, I get enough spoilers looking at Previews Magazine. Right. I feel bad for you. You, had, you, do. you. you look at the internet, you read of learning. Damn. Yeah. You are a tough motherfucker. <laughs> you endure the... <laughs> I can't do any of that stuff. Uh, and then I, uh, I get my revenge by doing this show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make oh, other people endure some bullshit. Right. You yeah. put, put it up. Put your, put bullshit back on the internet. Yep. So people can uh, just suffer along with you. Bullshit. Yeah. Yep. You know what we, you should really do yeah. is, uh, we should have gave a favorable review to this book and maybe everybody would have rushed out and read it. Right, right. That'd be cool. Or, you never know, maybe it was really awesome and we're just telling you not to read it <laughs> so you, uh, miss out. Yeah, yeah. You'll never know, Internet. You'll never know. Could be lying. We are very good actors. Oh, yeah. Clearly. Incredibly good actors. If anyone's learned anything in this uh, podcast. <laughs> we are excellent uh, actors. We have fantastic improv skills. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's no getting around us. We are fucking with your mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, let's end this. Okay. What else you got? Other stories? I got nothing. Nothing. I got me bitching about pop culture for hey. the last half hour, 45 nothing minutes. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Pop culture deserves it every once in a while. Yeah. That'll make it stronger. That'll make it come up back better and fresher and more exciting. <laughs> um, what are we doing? Let's, uh, let's watch a movie. Okay. Not right now. Oh. Right now, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's getting late, or I would. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, next episode, though. How yeah. about that? Okay. How about Year of the Carnivore? What is that? It is not a movie about carnivores. Hmm. Those are animals that eat meat, right? That's right. I eat meat. Yeah? I love meat. This could be your year. I've had uh, a lot of meats in, uh, in the past uh, couple of days. Really? Lots of burgers, lots of hot dogs, lots uh-huh. of rats. Yeah? Yeah. Bacon. Some shrimp. You didn't? No. I thought you had shrimp tonight. No. What'd you have? Uh, meatballs. Really? Yeah. Tonight? Not tonight. Oh, so it's tonight. Oh, tonight? Lobster. Lobster. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's something aquatic. Yeah. Which reminds me. Yeah. Something really weird happened to Mavericks today. Somebody came in looking for Aquaman comics. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. That never happens. <laughs> no, never. I wouldn't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, like, looking for Silver Age Aquaman comics. Huh. And, uh... Like, just... Like for value or to read? Um, well, I don't Cause know. Because if you wanted to read, I'm sure you've got some showcases. Yeah, we've got reprints. So yeah. yeah. But he was younger. I mean, like 20-ish. Yeah. And he was looking for Aquaman comics. And I pulled out this, like, little box that had some Silver Age comics. And we had two Aquamans in there. Yeah. And they were, you know, no more than $7 each. They weren't, like, high grade or, right, right. you know, his first appearance. Or, and uh, he looked at them. And he's like, oh, wow, thanks. And then he put them back and didn't buy anything. But just the fact that he was looking for them kind of that's was weird. very strange. Is he, is he a fan of uh, Tom vs. Aquaman, maybe? Well, that's possible. Yeah. That's possible. The bone up? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe yeah, Maybe Tom recently described an issue that he just had to see for himself. Maybe. So. Could be. Could be. Hmm. I don't know. So you're the carnivore. You're the carnivore. All right. <laughs> Let's do that. Right. All right. Good yeah. night. Good night. You can subscribe to Gutter Trash at iTunes or directly at guttertrash.net. If you go to iTunes, please leave us a review. You can email us at eric at guttertrash.net or jason at guttertrash.net. For more info, you can find us on Facebook. Or you can go to seanborn.net or buyerbeware.guttertrash.net. Listen to our sister podcast, League Night, at league.guttertrash.net. Thank you for listening. Until next time.